Hey everybody. Uh, I just want to go over a thing. I want to go over the story structure of an RPG game. I'm going to first start with something I've seen talked about a lot and that's the hero's journey. This is a uh, story format came out of the work of uh, Joseph Campbell and uh, it's also it's also the uh, format or the, the story storyline followed by Star Wars and and uh, and every single Disney movie ever made and just about every movie you've ever made so some of these elements from the hero's journey do work in RPG games there's there's no doubt about it but some of them I find don't work at all so I'm just gonna go over briefly the things that I don't like about the hero's journey in RPG games essentially essentially what it is that that bothers me about them is it's very difficult to force heroes into this format it's very easy when you write a story or a, or a book to have the heroes follow this format but I think as a GM if you expect your heroes in your game to follow this sort of format you're gonna have a lot of difficulty unless you've come to some kind of agreement with them or you've scripted it somehow so that so that uh, they know what when they're supposed to play certain roles also the other thing is the hero's journey seems to me works better with a solo hero than a group of heroes especially when there's a bunch of different minds behind the heroes for example players players will have all different ideas about who their heroes are what their roles in the group are even what the actual adventure is or even what the goals of the adventure are so to try and make each one of those heroes have a hero's journey, I think, is extremely difficult. At least, I've always found it so. So, I'm just going to go over quickly what I'm talking about. So, the very first step is the call to adventure. Well, this one, I've had lots of players refuse. <laughs> Now, I've seen there's lots of advice about that when you plan out an adventure and the adventures just don't pick up the torch and carry on with it. And that's what happens. That's the call to adventure. When you when the heroes won't won't listen to the call to adventure, don't recognize the call to adventure, don't hear the call to adventure or just are not interested in the call to adventure. And this is the very first part. This is the very first start of the hero's journey. And already we've run into a difficulty with it. So I am going to show you a different story structure that works, I think, extremely well in RPG games that I've used since the very beginning of my playing back in the 80s. So the next step is refusal. Right? And doubt. Now, the thing is, is that once you put out the call to adventure, you can't count on the heroes refusing it. They may pick it up right away and just tear right after it. So you, there's no refusal phase. There's no doubt phase. The only way to install doubt into the heroes is to throw really super mean looking monsters that they're not sure they can defeat. Well, that's too soon in the story structure. Because the next step, right, is meet your mentor. Now, again, we run into problems here because I've found that in RPG games, the only mentors that players will readily accept, as far as I can tell, are characters that seem uh, much more powerful than themselves. So, for example, an old wizard or, or a, a uh, fighter that's, that's much higher level. Well, a mentor doesn't have to be like that at all. A mentor uh, could be a talking toad. So, 
you're base you're basically left as far as I can tell with just one sort of mentor and that's a mentor that is physically powerful because that's the most likely what the heroes will look up to at least in my games it has been okay so the next step is testing allies right you're testing your allies and your enemies all right well this one's all right i mean you can i don't know about testing the allies when you get a mentor you've got an ally perhaps you picked up allies after after meeting your mentor perhaps your allies are a group of friends or a group of of henchmen or hirelings you could you could characterize them as your allies but allies are much better for a single hero and a writer writes in allies otherwise you don't really want a single hero in the group stealing the show and all the other players become supporting cast members and that's basically what you're looking at and you and i think that that's worth avoiding so again the next step is another bout of self-doubt now you can go and watch any disney movie and you'll see all these steps being played out uh and star wars star wars is actually absolutely excellent because joseph campbell actually helped work on star wars and he advised uh he was an advisor on the movie so absolutely amazing i, I think the original star wars i'm not talking about all the rest that followed up but the original star wars is absolutely textbook hero's journey fantastic job i think it's one of the reasons the movie was so good Anyway, I don't want to go on about Star Star Wars, but I I have I, I believe that's one of the the big reasons that it was so good is just because it was so exemplary of the hero's journey, and the hero's journey does make a good story. But the self doubt phase again, again. Now you're looking at a group of heroes, maybe two, three, four, five, six players are all supposed to experience self doubt. Can they actually do this? Well, I've attempted this in games before, and I would say uh, 50% chance, <laughs> maybe higher that they just quit. Again, because in order to make them self-doubt, as soon, as soon, as, as, soon as, as a DM you enter the possibility that, that maybe the players shouldn't do this, the players you'll find are pretty willing to follow the DM's lead because uh, it could mean the destruction of the party. So. This one's very hard. If you do that, if, if you put in self-doubt into the player's minds, which is what you're supposed to do in the hero's journey, this is that part of the story, uh, they might just quit. In fact, there's a really good chance that they'll just quit. <laughs> I've had that happen, right? Uh, so, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty rough. Okay, so the next one is that you have to overcome your doubt. Sorry about my chicken scratch here, probably hard to read. Um, but you have to overcome your self-doubt. You have to come overcome an ordeal, right? But also, you have to defeat the foe. All right. Well, that's that's pretty that's pretty straightforward. So you have to go through a bunch of ordeals, and you have to defeat the foe. Uh, then you get the reward. So that's pretty easy. You get your reward, and then you have to deal with the consequences of your actions. And then, uh, so so you have to you have to. Deal with the aftermath, I guess, is a good way of putting it. Uh oh, I'm running out of. So you have to deal with the aftermath of the big combat and all of that, going back to town, whatever, whatever loose ends. You have to clean up all of those. Uh, but then the story climax is supposed to be, right, if you're following the hero's journey, is supposed to be the resurrection of your enemy. Now, you can only do this so many times, resurrect an enemy for the final battle. 
If you did this with every adventure, your players would get pretty annoyed at you. They would see a pattern. It's odd, they don't see the pattern at all when they watch a Disney movie, but in an adventure, I guarantee you, they're going to notice the pattern. They're going to get pretty pissed. They feel like they overcame and they defeated the foe, only to find out the foe came back and is, is you know, a strong, and now they have to fight the foe again. This is going to be pretty annoying to your players. I guarantee it. And they'll, they'll, they won't mind the first time. It'll be really fun. But the second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, they're going to start seeing a pattern. They're going to start getting annoyed. It honestly won't work, in my opinion. I've never, I've never had it work. Not, not constantly. If for some reason, it seems to work in movies. Uh, it does seem to work in a lot of novels. I've never really read a novel with this uh, this format, but it, I know it does work with some. Uh, but in an RPG game, I don't think you can pull off most of these things over and over again or count on them. You you make you make the players doubt themselves. They may just go find another adventure, <laughs> right? You resurrect the foe. They may r run away. They may get mad and quit the game. Like, hey, why didn't we already defeated the foe? Why, is, why did the foe get all of a sudden resurrected or get a super healing spell or something, right? Every time, it's going to get old. Uh, but then, but then, the, uh, then the very last is the return. So your hero returns, reflects on what they learned. So they, re they return back to, their, back to their village, back to their hometown, whatever. And again, that's that's fine. I mean, that part's going to happen, right? So, what I'm going to suggest... I'm going to get a different pen here. This one's kind of going on me. Hopefully this one's better. And what I use is something called... Freitag's Pyramid. This is an ancient story structure. It's being it tried and true. It's being used uh, for centuries, and a lot of stories use this structure. It's it's uh, very common in older books, and works works uh, works really well in an RPG game, in my opinion. So, Freitag developed this in, or he, he wrote about this, he, he sort of, uh, 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 I wouldn't say he discovered it, but he made it known in the 19th century. He was an author that wrote fiction, and he found that this is a structure that had been being used for a very long time. Uh, so basically what it starts out with is an exposition where you, which we, we would know as a setting or setup, right? So you're setting up the story, you're introducing the heroes to the town, to the characters, to who needs be, to be saved, whatever's going on, right? And then you have to start exploring the story's cons, or the story's, story's conflict. So if the conflict is with a set of orcs or elves or or, you know, different monsters, dragons out in the mountains, whatever, you, you, start, exploit, you start exploring that. But you have, you have kind of an inciting incident. So, it all kind of starts off with an incident. Right? Now... I've seen advice, and I think it's pretty good advice. This is this, you know, at this stage with the setup, you're meeting in a tavern, you're all getting to know each other, you're deciding we need to go on an adventure together, you know, that sort of thing, the boring old yada yada yada. Now I've seen advice, and I've used it, and it works wonderfully, and that's to just start with the incident, to just start right with whatever triggers what's going on. So. That works very well, but you can also do the setup too. The setup is, I think the setup is kind of nice too. If you start with the incident, you still have to do the setup, but the setup would come after, and then you start getting the rising climax. So, what happens here is you begin, you begin 
the climax and that is basically the action. The action begins to happen. So after your incident, the dragon flies by and burns down your tavern or attacks a town. The, the orcs attack a ship and sink a ship or, or uh, uh, people start flooding into town desperate for help because something's attacked their city, whatever. An ancient evil uh, creature wanders through the town and everybody's scared another one's going to come and so the heroes have to go look for it. And you incrementally step up the action. It gets more and more involved more and more action-packed until finally you hit the climax and you know this is probably where you hit meet the big bad right you fight the big bad well here you would fight the big bad but then once you fought the big bad at the climax right you have falling action now if you want to take something from the hero's journey there's there's no reason you couldn't resurrect the big bad and oh no you know, the peak is here. That's basically what the hero's journey does. But in Frytag's Pyramid, you could do that, obviously, but, but then this would just be a minor dip. It would just keep going. But generally speaking, what happens is that you have falling action. So you've defeated the big bad. Now you have to get back to town. So plenty of the big bad's minions are still in the woods. Uh, maybe maybe there are creatures the big big bad has has uh, released to hunt down the players you have to fight them as you try to get back to town you get back to town and uh, and there's a resolution basically basically with the resolution maybe you're greeted as heroes maybe you're given a reward maybe you're not maybe you're maybe you're perceived as bad guys never know you have a lot of flexibility with this story structure but there's no there's no uh, there's there's no role for the that the player has to fulfill or any expectations the player has to fulfill like there are in the hero's journey. There's no refusal or doubt. There's no meeting a mentor. There's no testing allies. There's no self-doubt. There's no overcoming self-doubt. There's just def defeating the foes, but in a linear action. Instead of just going right from meeting the foe, the expectation is that there'll be rising action, and then you'll meet the foe at the climax. You still have the resolution. You can put in a reward here if a reward is warranted. There's also the anti-climax where trying to get back to town or trying to return back from your journey, you're running into monsters and stuff. So in this one, in the in the Frytag's Pyramid, It isn't, it isn't as compelling a story, say, as a Disney movie, maybe. Actually, I, I think it probably, I think it is, uh, because it has a lot more free, act, free freedom in it. If you want to have self-doubt, you can, if a, hero, if a hero wants to feel self-doubt, but they don't all have to feel self-doubt. But again, that's entirely up to the player and up to the character. It's not part of the structure. In the hero's journey, it's part of the structure. And you can't put, you can't dictate to the players that they have to participate in a structure. You just can't, especially, especially big ones like self-doubt. Self-doubt twice? Really? You can't do that. They're going to walk away. <laughs> right? But if you have rising action, then they'll just get swept up. And then you end up just with an evening of absolute fun as things get tougher and tougher and tougher. Finally, you meet the big bad. You have to fight to get back out of the dungeon. You have to get fight back to get to town. You have to sail back to the island. You have to do whatever. And then the resolution happens and you're the hero. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that because I really think Frytag's Pyramid is a much, much better structure for role-playing games than Hero's Journey. I understand why people like Hero's Journey. I like Hero's Journey. I think it's great. I think uh, Joseph Campbell's work is absolutely amazing. 
but in terms of allowing players the freedom to explore their characters and to and to act like their characters not like written characters in a book i think right Freytag's pyramid works the absolute best. So yeah, that's uh, that's this that's this video. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And if you have any comments, if you disagree with me or whatever, please leave a comment down below. Please don't forget to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe if you found this uh, helpful and hit the little uh, bell thing and uh, so that you can get notified when I put out more videos. And thanks for watching. All right, take care.